In section two, we're going to talk about data visualizations and how to generate a series of charts and graphs using the Java platform APIs. Then we're going to talk about different things that you'd want to do with these different charts and graphs. And finally, ways to analyze time series data. Now we're going to talk about the Datasaurus Dozen and the way that visual representation plays a very important part of being able to explain your data. And what we're going to talk about is the role of how data is simply more than the numbers and more than the summary statistics. We're going to cover the role of visualizations. And then we're going to talk about something that I think is a particularly fantastic bit of research from Autodesk Research called the Datasaurus Dozen and talk about how that plays into an old mathematical set of properties called Anscombe's Quartet. Now in terms of data as numbers, when it comes time to talk about summary statistics or overall data, we tend to focus on what that data actually is in terms of numbers. Average metrics, summary statistics, basic properties that describe the data. And when we go to use that in a lot of conversations, either sales or many management conversations, people tend to find that information boring and unconvincing because what they want is the overall story. What does this data say? What do these statistics mean in terms of what it is that we're trying to process? So it's not simply saying what the statistics are, it's being able to describe what's happening as a result of those data points. Now, in terms of visualization, let's say we have a set of numerical properties. We have a mean of the x-coordinates, a mean of the y-coordinates. We know the standard deviations, and we have the correlation coefficients. Now, you generally expect that all information which contained uh, the exact same means and standard deviations would look relatively close to each other. And that's not actually true, as the Autodesk researchers were able to point out by drawing a dinosaur, and specifically a Tyrannosaurus rex, that had a set of statistical properties in terms of mean, median, or not mean, not median, just the mean standard deviations and correlation coefficient. So these statistical properties, these summary statistics, were able to stay constant, and you might expect, well, it would just be a slightly modified dinosaur in the next graph, but they came up with a whole series of different graphs that look completely different, yet have the same means and standard deviations and correlation coefficients that we see down on the bottom right. So those have remained the same, but now instead of a dinosaur, we have a star, we have a circle, we have sets of nine dots, and what these are is they're the same summary statistics, but they're completely different graphs when it comes time to look at them. So it's these visualizations that actually play a key role, because if we just said, well, all of these graphs have the same statistical properties, that's not necessarily true. Now, this research is based on something called Anscombe's Quartet, which was a mathematician who, back in 1973, created a several small data sets which, when mapped and plotted on a graph, had the exact same means, sample various, the mean of the x, mean of the y, correlations, even the linear regression when it came time to do an analysis of these data points was the exact same to about two or three decimal places. And when you look at all of these charts, they look completely different. So simply going and saying, I have a set of data points and here are the statistical properties of them, and this other data set has the same statistical properties, it's not actually convincing because these charts over on the bottom left look significantly different. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a file called Dino Demo, and we're actually going to generate a plot of a graph that shows that Datasaurus dozen and draws the dinosaur on a chart using Java APIs. So now we're going to spin over to the demo, and I'm going to switch over. And this is the location of that Autodesk research paper where you can see it uh, surprisingly won only an honorable mention, even though it's actually a very funny mathematical paper. And you're welcome to download the PDF, but as I scroll through this page of the representation of the graphs that they were able to produce, you can see this is Anscombe's Quartet, that 1973 mathematician, and those same graphs and charts there. There's your basic statistics of the dinosaur. And here's a set of alternative graphs that have the exact same statistical properties, yet look completely different. So there's that star. Here's the circle. There's an X. There are those dots. Here's a couple completely vertical lines. You want horizontal lines. And what's interesting is all of these have these exact same statistical properties. So what I've gone ahead and done is down towards the bottom of here, inside of data sets and code, they have the data sets, the paper, and some of the code available for download. And what I've done is to go ahead and add some of these into the pack publishing project. So down in other sources in section one resources, you'll see a file called dino.tsv. 
wherein I've copied the information out of that data set. So we have the data set, the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and you can see the dyno. That's the only one that I wanted to show here. And I have all of the data points that make up that actual dinosaur. So now if I go into this dyno demo class, what we see, this is a basic Java FX application. So we extend application and we go in our start method. We just set the basic title to dinosaurus dozen. It should actually be datasaurus dozen because that's the name of the paper. And then I want to create a scatter chart because my goal here is to visualize all of the elements that get passed in. So if I hit control B and I move down, you see I set up my number axis to go between zero and hundred, which is fine because that tends to be the range within dino.tsv. By putting that in here, I don't have to do an extra pass on it. And the way that we do this and the way that we get our data is we open an input stream to that resource. You'll notice I like to use this dino demo class get resources stream, and that's why it's in the same package. So we open up the dino.tsv. We go through in a buffered reader because we want to access each individual line. We want to ignore the very first line. And then I go through and I set up a stream. So I want to collect all of the data points within this element. So I take my reader, I go through each line. I'm going to print it out to the console, even though you don't have to. So if you want to run this for real, you might want to comment that line out, but I'll keep it in here. And then I'm going to take each line and I'm going to split it by tab character, because when I go over here, that's what it is. And what I have here is I'm going to take array value of one as the X coordinate and array value of two as the Y coordinate. And if we go here, this this is the zeroth element, so it's the word dino, the name of that data set. Then you have your x coordinate with a tab, and then your y coordinate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to collect all of those x and y coordinates into a list, and I'm going to add them all into this dinosaur data set. So this is how you're able to plot multiple charts and data sets on an individual scatter chart within JavaFX. And then really all I do up here is I take my scatter chart and I add it into the VBox, which ultimately goes into the scene. So that is how it gets displayed as on the screen. And if I run this application, which it should run pretty quick, if I run this application, what we're going to see is all of the output and all of the elements from the dino.tsv because I peek into each individual element to see its coordinates. There we go. There's all the coordinates that it displays. And here it is. That's very clearly a dinosaur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this just to expand it a little bit and make it easier to see. And you can see my JavaFX application is plotting out this Datasaurus dozen where you can clearly tell that regardless of any statistical information that we've heard, we're very clearly looking at a dinosaur. So if all we had was a set of the numbers, we wouldn't necessarily know that someone was just drawing a picture in a chart.